Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the best stocks to buy, as well as the latest stock market news updates that investors need to know about. With that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, let's get right into it. Recently, the general stock market has been quite volatile, but if we look at the results year to date, we see that the NASDAQ, the SP 500, and the Dow Jones are all up pretty substantially, which means that this is great news for investors. Now, sadly, Apple specifically hasn't been so lucky, and if you didn't know, Apple is a gigantic technology company that sells smartphones as well as personal computers. Surprisingly, year-to-date, Apple has actually fallen by around 7.91% in their share price, but I personally am using this as a great buying opportunity because this is an extremely fundamentally strong and solid company. Therefore, I would encourage you to look further into Apple Apple stock because to me they are one of the best companies to buy on the stock market right now and what better time to buy this company than on a weakness because who doesn't want to get fantastic companies and stocks at a cheap share price but I will leave that up to you. Next let's talk about airline stocks and if you know me you know I own a plethora of various airline stocks so we have a news update on TSA and I'm not referring to a stock ticker symbol I'm actually referring to new changes that could potentially be implemented at airports and airlines and here they are. If if you are familiar with going to a grocery store and going to self-checkout, essentially airlines and airports could institute self-checkouts for TSA. As of this report, the United States has officially opened their first TSA self-service screening system, and that was implemented at Harry Reid Airport in Las Vegas. Essentially, pre-check passengers can scan themselves as well as their own baggage, and this will minimize their interactions with TSA agents. At first glance, this may seem innovative, because just like the self-checkouts at grocery stores, this should increase efficiency. However, there is a huge problem here, and that would be in regards to safety. Clearly, if somebody wanted to do something malicious or take over a plane, they would go and check themselves as a pre-check passenger, and they would quote-unquote scan themselves and their bag, even if their bag actually contains harmful devices. So from a safety perspective and a security perspective, I do not think that airports should adopt this technology. There are investors on both sides of this, because yes, some investors will say that this will increase airport efficiencies, which is technically true. However, is it worth the cost of safety and security? I'll leave that choice up to you. In the meantime, depending on what airlines and airports do, this could impact their overall share price for better or for worse. So just please be aware of this story and keep an eye out for that. In macroeconomic news, you should know that February's Consumer Price Index report will be released on Tuesday, and this will give us fresh data in regards to inflation. The reason why investors need to be aware of this is because the Federal Reserve will use this data, or data similar to this, to decide whether or not they will higher or lower interest rates or keep them the same. And ideally, we would want them to lower interest rates, because if they do so, this will act as a very positive catalyst for the general stock market, thus lifting the share prices of multiple stocks. In the short term, it doesn't really matter if these results are good or bad because eventually the Federal Reserve will be forced to lower interest rates, which will increase the respected prices of all of the indices or indexes such as the S&P 500, the Nasdaq, and the Dow Jones. So this is going to act as a phenomenal catalyst for investors, and therefore investors should be looking forward to it. Next up, in cryptocurrency news, you should be aware that Bitcoin, symbol BTC, reached $70,000 per Bitcoin, which was absolutely amazing before retreating in the respected price. For me personally, I absolutely love the enthusiasm surrounding this, and many believe that it could reach $100,000 in 2025, and others even believe it could reach $125,000 in 2025, but only time will tell. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about Bitcoin down below in the comments. Next, let's talk about more macroeconomic news, because the United States added 275,000 jobs in February, which is great news. Normally, when we get very positive macroeconomic news, this reflects very positively in the general stock market, which increases the share prices of your favorite stocks. However, the recent jobs report that came in was actually mixed because unemployment actually rose to 3.9%. And we also have to take into consideration that wage growth and salary growth actually slowed down over the same period. So we got both good news and bad news. And overall, these things will cancel out and it will not impact the stock market for the positive or for the negative. Next up, let's talk about more single stock news, starting off with the Novo Nordisk. And if 
you know me, I personally hold them in my portfolio. If you didn't know, this company has been in the news lately because of their weight loss pharmaceutical, which competes directly with Eli Lilly. And Eli Lilly is another company that I personally hold in my portfolio. But the reason why Novo Nordisk is in this news update is because they recently scored FDA approval, and it prescribed that their pharmaceutical named Wagovi will be implemented to lower the risk of heart disease, heart attack, stroke, and even death from cardiovascular events. Wagovi should specifically be used for adults with obesity, so this is a very positive news in regards to this company and their product, and this good news should increase their respected share price. But in my opinion, here's the best part. This approval by the FDA may also help broaden their insurance coverage for this pharmaceutical, making it easier to obtain for customers. And to add even more good news, Novo Nordisk is also seeking a similar type of approval over in Europe, so they are literally making all of the right moves here. In the end, I would highly encourage you to do your own research on Novo Nordisk as you see here on screen, so feel free to put that name into your brokerage and look further into the company and their stock. Next up, let's talk about Rivian, which is an electric vehicle maker. Rivian is a newer startup electric vehicle company which recently unveiled their new mid-priced electric vehicle. However, they also surprised the market by revealing two more models this same week. Literally, within the last 24 hours, Rivian said they received over 68,000 reservations for their new R2 SUV. This vehicle is priced around $45,000 and it's set to compete directly with Tesla's Model Y. However, the company also surprised the market by making an unexpected release of their newer SUV called the R3 and its high-performance version. As of right now, the R3 as well as the high-performance version called the R3X are not available for pre-order right now, so essentially Rivian just teased the market. However, it seemed that this worked because Rivian stock soared by 17.25% this week in response to this fantastic news. However, we shouldn't get ahead of ourselves here because the R2 deliveries won't actually begin until 2026. And on top of that, fundamentally, this company does have some problems and I just want to make you aware of these problems. According to the article, Rivian is burning cash and they are losing $43,000 on each of their first generation cars. On top of that, they also could need $2.5 billion more just to survive until 2026 to where they can begin R2 production and deliveries. And this is all according to a Jeffries analyst. You should also be aware that this company lost $5.4 billion last year, and these types of metrics really scare investors, which is why you should always make sure to do your own research before you make any investment decision into any company. Now, the counter argument here is that the long-term prospects of this company do look rather positive. Positive. And for me personally, I like Rivian overall, but as of right now, I just have a hold rating on this company and I'm watching them, so they are on a watch list for me. But I would love to hear your thoughts about this company down below in the comments. Next up, let's talk about an aircraft manufacturer, which is none other than Boeing. And if you know me, we've reported on this company a lot, and they have had terrible news updates recently. But I'm using this as an opportunity to buy their shares at a cheap price, and their ticker symbol is BA. So let's talk about the latest news, which of course is bad. This week alone, there were three headlines that caused a Boeing share price to drop even lower, and here they are. United Airlines was using a Boeing's aircraft, except the Boeing aircraft actually ran off course into the grass, and this forced the evacuation of 160 passengers and six crew members in which one of them was hurt. But before that, there was another Boeing plane also at United Airlines which lost a tire shortly after takeoff. And then lastly, there was a third Boeing aircraft which had flames coming from its engine. However, luckily, no one was hurt in these situations. Now, this may sound odd, but trust me, Boeing is a very good company. So while all of these news updates, which are rather negative, are coming out about this company, which is weighing down on their respected share price, I am using this as a buying opportunity in this stock because fundamentally, this company is very solid. Next up, let's talk about Elon Musk and his AI company named XAI. And again, these types of news updates will actually reflect positively or negatively on Tesla's TSLA share price. So let's get right into it. Elon Musk recently said that his artificial intelligence startup named XAI intends to open source its generative AI chatbot named Grok this week. 
If you didn't know, Grok is an AI chatbot that is available on X to X Premium Plus users. And for context, X used to be called Twitter. So on the X platform, you can pay $16 a month or $22 in their app to get access to this particular AI chatbot. The recent move to make Grok open source comes just days after Elon Musk sued another company that he co-founded, which was named OpenAI. For context, OpenAI is the parent company which created ChatGPT, and Grok and ChatGPT are competitors. Essentially, Elon Musk has a problem with OpenAI not making ChatGPT open source. But here's how it relates to Tesla. Essentially, Elon Musk wanted control over OpenAI so he can keep ChatGPT open source, while using Tesla as their own cash cow. But it seems that his strategy did not go to plan, and it's not working out. So instead, it was reported in January that XAI AI was in talks to raise up to $6 billion in funding, with Musk targeting a $20 billion valuation for the startup. So in summary, Elon Musk has an artificial intelligence company named XAI, which created their Grok chatbot, which is open source. This open source chatbot is used in Elon Musk's other company, which is named X, which was formerly known as Twitter. Elon Musk is also mad at other companies like OpenAI, which do not have their chatbots as open source to benefit humanity. So therefore, Elon Musk wants to take control of the company and make it open source. Overall, I actually think this is pretty good news, and it should impact Tesla's share price positively. But I'd love to hear your thoughts about this story down below. Speaking about Tesla stock, let's talk about some news which recently increased their respected share price. And this actually has to do with a Chinese battery maker. So let's get right into it. The reason Tesla's share price was actually climbing higher was due to a Chinese company, which is better known as CATL. This company is the world's largest battery maker, as well as a Tesla supplier, and their share price recently jumped by 14.4%, which was so aggressive that it actually lifted some of their supplier stock, such as Tesla. The reason for the recent enthusiasm surrounding CATL shares was because an analyst from Morgan Stanley upgraded this company to a buy rating from a hold rating, and they also raised their stock price target up 14%, which was very good for this company. Therefore, this was positive news for both Tesla as well well as CATL, and I anticipate further upside left in both of these companies. But for me personally, I would much rather invest into Tesla than this Chinese company, because foreign companies are extremely risky. You should also be aware of the good news and the bad news surrounding Tesla's EV price cuts. So let's get right into it, and hopefully I can calm some investors' nerves. Essentially, Tesla was lowering the prices of their electric vehicles, and here is the strategic thinking behind that decision. In a nutshell, lowering the prices of these electric vehicles make the company more competitive in the EV market. If Tesla vehicles are too expensive, no one will buy them because there are other cheaper electric vehicle options. So to compete with the current competition, Tesla was forced to lower their prices. By lowering the prices of their respected electric vehicles, this should increase the demand for electric vehicles, which should encourage people to buy their electric vehicles. However, this does come at a cost. By lowering the price of the vehicle, their per car profits were initially crimped. And this shouldn't be surprising, because to lower the price of the vehicle, it means that Tesla is making less profits from every vehicle that they sell because the vehicle is selling at a cheaper price point. For me, investors in Tesla should not freak out about this because if they don't do this, then Tesla would no longer be competitive in the market which they are a leader in. On top of that, Tesla is still turning a reasonable profit, especially when we compare them to other EV makers. Now let's get into the nitty gritty because Tesla's average retail price per delivered vehicle continues to inch lower following these price cuts. According to the article, as of the final quarter of 2023, it stood at about $44,500 for cars that cost an average of $36,100 to manufacture. This then would translate to an EBITDA per car of $8,160 and a net profit per car of about $5,100. So the main complaint here is that all four of these figures are now at their lowest that they have ever been since 2021 and investors don't like that. But again, this is a necessary evil. Tesla had to do this to remain competitive. Due to Tesla's price cuts, some investors believe that Tesla is quote-unquote uninvestable, and I think they are completely wrong. The company is still turning a very impressive profit after all, and they are fundamentally solid, let alone all of the upcoming catalysts for this company that they will achieve in the future. A few upcoming catalysts for this company would include their $25,000 electric vehicle, which will be released in 2025. Next, you have this company's artificial intelligence segment on top of their robo-taxis. 
So these are huge catalysts that are coming up for this company, which is why I am buying this company on weakness. But that's not all. You also need to be aware of a few other things. For instance, an investments CEO had to say this about Tesla, and I quote, Tesla's mega batteries business could be worth $120 billion, substantially more than its standalone car business. She goes on to say, so we think this growth driver is completely underappreciated by investors. And I completely agree with this investments CEO. Essentially, do not allow for short-term volatility or news updates or even company decisions to impact a long-term investment opportunity such as Tesla. I use the same line of logic in regards to Boeing and Tesla, because despite these negative news updates, the long-term trajectory of these companies and stocks look very impressive. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about this down below in the comments. Next up, let's talk about NVIDIA, ticker symbol NVDA, and this is a very prominent artificial intelligence company which creates GPUs. Recently, NVIDIA's shares were actually down around 0.9% in pre-market trading. Now, what's odd about their share price slipping is that this came directly after an investment firm named Cantor Fitzgerald boosted their price target on the semiconductor giant. According to this investment firm, they raised NVIDIA's share price target to $1,200 per share from their original $900 price prediction. So this is great news. And on top of that, they maintained an overweight rating for this company and stock. But this is not the only good news that Nvidia got, because next week, they will have their GTC event. Nvidia's chief executive will kick off this event with a keynote address, which could offer additional insights into the company's vision and how they could further take advantage of AI. Lastly, the company also received good news because they unveiled several new products and partnerships, including deals with companies like Microsoft, Oracle, and Amazon. So despite all of this good news, their share price still pulled back in pre-market trading. Next up, let's talk about Reddit, which recently launched their long-awaited IPO with a $748 million target. So let's talk about it. If you didn't already know, Reddit is a social media company, and they disclosed further details in regards to their upcoming IPO. As of right now, the company and some existing shareholders are seeking to raise as much as $748 million. And according to recent details, Reddit and holders are planning to sell 22 million shares for $31 to $34 each. However, once they actually IPO, Reddit will have a market value of around $5.4 billion, based on an expected 158.98 million shares outstanding. However, their IPO is going to be extremely volatile, and here's why. About 8% of the shares in the IPO are being set aside for Reddit users and moderators. On top of that, there are going to be shares set aside for board members, friends, families, employees, and directors within this company. But here's the problem. These shares will not be subject to a lockup period. This means that these shareholders can sell their stock on the opening day as soon as it goes live. And that in turn will lower Reddit's overall stock price. In essence, this IPO will be very exciting because either the overall share price will drop dramatically right after it IPOs or it will surge to the moon. And I'm excited to see which one of these will happen. But I'd love to hear your thoughts about this and your predictions down below for Reddit's IPO. Next up, let's talk about Celsius, which is a beverage company. If you didn't know, this company serves several delicious, sparkling, and non-carbonated flavors. Their products are also kosher, vegan certified, and they're free of sugar, gluten, and soy. So they are trying to infiltrate a load of different markets in regards to their beverages. But why is Celsius Holdings, ticker symbol C-E-L-H, in the news today? Well, I'll tell you. Over the last three months, insiders, investors, and institutions have been buying this company heavily, and that has pushed up their overall share price. Now, in my opinion, I think this company will actually pull back in their share price, because normally after this type of momentum, we see a pullback even if this company is fundamentally solid. Essentially, when we mix this type of support with healthy fundamentals, this company should at least be on a watch list. Their three-year sales growth rate is literally over 116.7%, which is great news. However, there is a problem here, because over the same period, their EPS growth is actually at a loss of 2,538.7%. Clearly, negative earnings growth is not something that you would want to see, but their EPS is estimated to ramp higher this year by 40.4%, which is very positive. That's why I think this company should be on investors' watch lists. But please remember that this company should pull back in their overall share price, because I've never seen a company surge this high, this aggressively, without some type of pullback, so please be aware of that. Right now, the company's trading at around $90 per share, and if this pullback happens, maybe you should take 
advantage of it, but always make sure to do your own research before making any investment decision. Now, I do have a quick go back because when we were talking about Bitcoin reaching a new record high, this will positively impact cryptocurrency stocks. As an example, Coinbase, which is a cryptocurrency platform where you can buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrencies, recently rose by 6.6% in the respected share price. Likewise, MicroStrategy, which owns a plethora of Bitcoin, jumped by 8.1% in their share price. Lastly, Marathon Digital, which is a company which mines Bitcoin, also increased in their share price by around 6.1%. But before we end the video, let's talk about what investors need to be aware of for the week ahead. Starting off with Oracle, ticker symbol O-R-C-L. This company is a Texas-based software giant, and they have a buy rating according to Seeking Alpha's quant rating system. And this aligns perfectly with what Wall Street analysts are saying about this stock, because they are in agreement that this company is a buying opportunity. But the reason why they are in this video Video is because they have an earnings release coming up. By the time you watch this video, their earnings report would have already been released. However, this is what they're anticipated to bring in. For their EPS, they should bring in $1.38 per share, and for their revenues, they're anticipated to bring in $13.3 billion. For context, Oracle has exceeded their EPS predictions in six of their last eight reports. So overall, I think they could do this again, which will act as a positive catalyst for their general share price. Now let's move on to Tuesday, March 12th. This is when Workhorse Group, ticker symbol WK AHS will release their quarter four results. This company is an electric vehicle last mile delivery company, and they have a strong sell rating according to Seeking Alpha's quant rating system. Meanwhile, Wall Street analysts rate this company as a holding opportunity. For their earnings report, it's projected that their earnings per share will come in at a loss of $0.09 cents per share, while their revenues will come in at $2.84 million. Other companies which will also report their earnings on that same day would include Clover Health Investments as well as Funware, so please keep an eye out for that. Next, let's move on to Wednesday, March 13th. This is when Zim Integrated Shipping Services, ticker symbol ZIM, will release their quarter four results. This is a shipping services company which I personally hold in my portfolio, and recently they got an upgrade from a Jeffries analyst. This analyst actually upgraded them to a buy rating and they gave them a $20 price target, which is amazing. But let's talk about their earnings report. They're anticipated to bring in a loss of $1.19 per share on revenues of $1.22 billion. Other notable companies which will also be reporting earnings on that same day would include companies like UiPath, Dollar Tree, and Sentinel One. But now let's move to Thursday, March 14th. This is when Adobe will update investors about their quarterly performance. Recently, Seeking Alpha's quant rating system upgraded this company from a hold rating to a buy rating, which now aligns with Wall Street analysts, because overall, Wall Street believes that this is a buying opportunity. For their upcoming earnings report, the company should bring in around $4.38 per share on revenues of $5.14 billion. Other notable companies which will also be releasing their earnings results on that same day would include Skills, ticker symbol SKLZ. Lastly, let's talk about Friday, March 15th. This is when Groupon, ticker symbol GRPN, will be scheduled to release their quarter four results as well. This company's share price has literally jumped by 200% over the past year, and Wall Street analysts give this company a buy rating, while Seeking Alpha's quant rating system gives this company a hold rating. Concerning their earnings report, they're anticipated to bring in earnings per share of 12 cents per share on revenues of $139.07 million. For more videos on the best stocks to buy and the latest stock market news updates, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now. Subscribe if you are new. Comment your thoughts down below about any or all of these stories. With that being said, I will see you in the next YT video.